Um, today's message is entitled, uh, Rend the Heavens. Rend the Heavens. And so, we're looking at the first few verses from Isaiah 64. Isaiah chapter 64. They're going to be up here, but if you want to follow in Bibles or Bible apps, you're welcome to do that as well. Isaiah 64. So the passage starts with, that, with this phrase, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Don't we all feel that way sometimes? Right? God, where are you? Why do you, why do you seem so aloof when I need you the most? We may not, we, we may want to, to, to shout this phrase, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. We may want to shout that to the heavens when we're dealing with a, with a situation, a difficult situation in our lives. We've gotten ourselves in trouble again. When someone we love or, or we ourselves are in need of a miracle, when a marriage is crumbling, when we see an injustice that should never be allowed to continue. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. One day this, this year stands out to me pretty significantly on February 24th. It had already been a really challenging first couple of months of 2022. And within an hour of each other, I read in the news that, that Russia had invaded Ukraine, and my heart was crushed. As you know, I've been there a couple times, and, and, and uh, that nation has a, has a place in my heart. And then within an hour of that, I got a phone call from my sister that my mother had passed away. And on, on that day, and many others in 2022, like you, I have wanted to shout to the heavens, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. But Isaiah was not motivated in saying this by his own need or because he had a rough day. He was not an insolent, it was not an insolent demand of God to do something like a child throwing a tantrum. But Isaiah's cry was actually one of faith and confidence in the only God who does do something when his people cry out to him. Let's read these verses. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil. Come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How can we be saved? Isaiah is recognizing in this passage that only a divine visitation can change the direction of his nation and bring any hope for a better future. He's recalling visitations of the past and anticipating visitations in the future because he knows that God is his nation's only hope. And what we need more than anything is 
a divine visitation, a move of God. Israel can't organize its way out of the mess that they're in. They can't, go, they can't do some, some good deeds and earn some brownie points so that God owes them. The verses to follow talk about how, how um, it's, it's the passage that we've often heard quoted in, in messages that, that our righteousness is as filthy rags in God's sight. Israel can't just do some good to outweigh the rebellion that they've done and maybe work their way out of this mess. They need a divine visitation. They need a loving, merciful, and gracious God to tear open the fabric of space-time and come down in power to change them and change their circumstances. And nothing less than that will do. The first thing that Isaiah tells us in this passage is that that if God were to do this, if he were to, to... to come down, rend the heavens, tear open the heavens, and come down. It would not be the first time that this has happened. He gives us an example in this passage, if we read between the lines of what's happening, of the the Exodus and Sinai event. We're told in in Exodus 19 and 20 that God descended on Mount Sinai and when he did, there there were thick, dark clouds and lightning and fire and thick smoke and earthquakes and a sound like a loud trumpet that shook the earth and God's voice speaking loudly from the midst of the crowd. This was such an awesome event, such an awesome experience In the literal sense of the word, it struck awe in the people to the extent that they were afraid and they hid from God and begged God to speak to Moses only and not to them. And yet God's coming, God's tearing open the heavens and coming down in that event brought their freedom from from Egypt, their birth as a nation, a covenant of relationship with God that gave them access to blessing and God's leadership. From the calling of Moses in the desert, that burning bush, I am experience, to the humiliation of Pharaoh, and his false gods to the physical rescue of Israel as they went through the sea on dry land. To the encounter with God at Sinai, this whole event, this awesome event of God giving the law to Moses and making a covenant with the nation of Israel. Isaiah wants us to know that this was no small thing that happened. It it wasn't just a nice Sunday school story, but it was a world-shaping event when God rent the heavens and broke into human history to act on behalf of his people. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. God is still doing awesome things that we do not expect. I could tell stories, many of you here could tell stories in 2022 of awesome things that God did that you did not expect. We had our list of things that we did expect, and some of them maybe he accomplished, some of them maybe didn't fit his timeline, but, but God did awesome things that we did not expect, and I believe that God 
in 2023 has a list of awesome things that we do not expect that he is preparing to do in our lives, in our families, in our church, in our city. Some of them are answers to prayer that you have been praying, that I have been praying for breakthrough and blessing. Some of them are things that we couldn't even dream of that God has up his sleeve for you and I in 2023. Awesome things that we do not expect. Isaiah gives us some keys here. He says, Since ancient times, no one has heard no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. I think in this, in this passage, I is highlighting, first of all, the fact that God is the only true God. There are so many things that can, that can um, demand our attention and our focus and our worship. We don't maybe recognize it as worship, but when we give our attention, our heart, our focus to something, that's worship. And there are so many things in our lives that demand our worship, that demand our focus, our attention, our heart's allegiance. But God is the only one who is the true God who, who hears and answers prayer. He's the only one worth calling to, praying to. The only one who acts even if it isn't according to our timeline, even if it is, doesn't follow our priority list, God is the only God who acts when we call out to Him. And again, Isaiah's prayer, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, is not a complaint. Like, God, where have you been? But it's a declaration of faith and a recognition that God is the kind of God who does this very thing. He is the one who does rend the heavens and come down. The only reason it's worth crying this out to the heavens is because God rends the heavens and comes down. He does. Isaiah is speaking to God's character. This is the kind of God we know you are. One that rends the heavens. One that enters into our situations. And whatever you have planned for us, as we cry out to you, you will work a miracle for your people. And Isaiah is also saying that God works on behalf of those who wait and those who remember. So big, important words in this passage. Those who wait and those who remember. And I think these two things are inseparable because our remembering informs our waiting. Why is it worth waiting when we call out to God and we haven't seen Him come through yet? Because we remember what he has done. As we read the scriptures, as we soak ourselves in who God says he is and what he said he has done, we remember. As we look back in our own lives, I have sat with you, many of you, and, and heard stories of miracles of salvation and heard stories of things that God has done in your family and miracles of healing. And I've, 
I've, I've heard those stories from you, and sometimes it's so easy to forget those stories when we're in the midst of another situation where we need God to intervene. We have short memories sometimes, don't we? But Isaiah calls us here to remember. Remember what God has done. Remember what He's brought you out of. Remember what He's brought you through. Remember how He has worked in impossible situations and done what only God can do. Because it's in the remembering that we are empowered to wait. And it's in the waiting that we surrender ourselves to God's perfect timing and His perfect way. Because He's not on vacation. He didn't take a sat day. He is at work. Isaiah's prayer was filled, was fulfilled in many ways in the days ahead, the days and years that followed his prayer. But none as dramatically as in the coming of Christ. Entrance of Jesus into the world was God rending the heavens and coming down. Why is it that we see angels everywhere in the nativity story. Because the fabric of the veil between heaven and earth had been torn open in that moment as God entered into our world and our need. And then later as Jesus is beginning his ministry, and is being baptized by John the baptizer. It says in Mark 1 verses 9 to 11, it says this. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven you are my son, whom I love, with you I am pleased. In that moment, as God prepared to pour out anointing on Jesus the human, to prepare him for a powerful ministry that would change the world. Now I know don't send me nasty emails. I know Jesus is also divine, was also divine in that moment. But he was Jesus the human, wasn't he? And in that moment, as God prepared to pour out his spirit upon Jesus for ministry, he tore the heavens open. It says Jesus saw the heavens torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. Then in Acts 2, verses 1 to 4, it says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They, all, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Again, God tore open the heavens. A sound like a violent wind filled the space that they were in. And the Spirit was poured out upon them in power. These are just a few examples of how we see God doing the very thing that Isaiah prayed to bring about his plan on the earth. I want us, before we finish this morning, to pray over 2023 
Father, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Not from a place of frustration or anger or disappointment and all of those things. It's okay if you feel those things, but that's not what, I, that, what this is about this morning. God's okay with our frustration at times. It's okay with our disappointment. It's okay with us working our way through those things. But this morning, I want us to pray this as a prayer of faith. God, you who rend the heavens and enter into our our space, our world, our mess, our difficulties, our troubles, our challenges. You who rend the heavens and come down. We pray a prayer of faith today that, oh God, you would in 2023 rend the heavens and come down. Because like in Isaiah's situation, your life, will not move in a Godward direction without God's help and power in 2023. My life. We will spiral, spiral into a, a, just a, a self-focused mess if we try to do this ourselves. Our church, Evangel, We'll go nowhere in 2023. We'll just spin our wheels and go nowhere unless God rends the heavens and comes in power and does what only God can do. Our city will say, stay stuck without hope and without God in the world, as it says in Ephesians chapter 2. Unless God comes, rends the heaven and comes in power and people have encounters with God that only he can give them. Not just what we tell them, but a revelation of Jesus in their life. And I want to challenge us today that it's in positioning ourselves to remember and wait. That we prepare ourselves for what God's going to do. Remembering and waiting aren't necessarily um, what's the word I'm looking for? Passive, thank you, are not necessarily passive, lazy postures. How many know we can wait and then we can wait? Right? We can, uh, well, whatever. I'll sit in my, my comfy chair and if God wants to come get me, he knows where I am. Or, God, is it today? I'm waiting. God, what are we going to do today? What have you got for us today? I'm waiting. And I want to encourage us that in order to position ourselves to remember and wait, that we prioritize in our lives, in 2023, God's word and his presence. His word and his presence. I, uh, you will have just received an email five minutes ago in your inbox while we're sitting here. Ding. There it is. <laughs> um, with, with links 
to, if you, I'm, I'm going to be doing, we've done this a couple times since I've been here, uh, a walk through the entire Bible in one year, um, and I'm going to be doing that again this year using, um, using a, a fantastic tool that, uh, that reads from uh, different places in Scripture, different, uh, very, a cross-section of Scripture. Um, I, I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm not saying it's the only, thing, the only way to engage with Scripture, but I want to challenge all of us to engage with the Word of God in a fresh way in 2023. To dig in, to open our hearts, to, to, to find a reading plan. If, the one, if this one doesn't work for you, uh, and by the way, we have paper versions of it in the lobby. If, you, if, you are, if you're a paper person, there are paper versions in the lobby uh, that you can take on your way out. Uh, but I also want to encourage you, the same, same uh, reading plan is in the YouVersion Bible app. If you use that on your device uh, and you can use it there. I just, if you don't use this one, use something. But I want to challenge us to engage with scripture this year let the word of god be alive to us let it not be a dead book let it not be just a book we turn to when we're in trouble but let it be let's eat the scriptures this year let's eat the word this year and I want to challenge us to make his, God's presence a priority in prayer. I want to encourage you, challenge you, call you to join with us in our week of prayer. There are, uh, there are 15 opportunities in the week of prayer to come to a prayer meeting. At least pick one right? Pick five, pick 15. I don't care, but, but I, I want to encourage you, engage with the presence of God, both privately and corporately, in prayer, in worship, in fasting. Um, uh, we've put in the, in the EB update, I'm going to be doing, I've done this the last two years, I'm going to do it again this year. This isn't a pat on, on the back or anything like that. It's just a, I need this. As your pastor, as your leader, I need this. And I'm doing a 20, 21 day liquid only fast starting January 16th for 21 days. If you want to join me for any part of that, for one day, for three days, for a week, for 21 days, for one meal a day for a week, what, what, whatever. But, but to to, uh, to through fasting, to focus our hearts and lives on the presence of Jesus. Wanna, I want to encourage you to to find times of resting in His presence in private. Just stop and be silent and be still and wait on Him. In our world, in our culture, we live at a pace where we don't often even know how to be still and silent. But let me suggest to you that it's in the stillness and silence that God often wants to meet us most deeply. And engage with his presence in the going as well. Because oftentimes we're waiting for God and God is waiting for us. Because it's in the activating, it's in the going, it's in the being obedient and doing what God is calling us to do, even when we know we don't have what it takes to do it, but we're being obedient, that God meets us with his anointing and power. It's in the going 
that we experience his presence often. So I want to encourage us and challenge us in all of those ways to prioritize his word and his presence. Remembering and waiting. Let this be the year that as individuals, as families, and as a church, that we walk in the powerful anointing of the Spirit that God wants us to walk in, and we see God do what only God can do. Let's stand. Let's pray. I want to encourage you as we do that if you personally resonate with oh that you would rend the heavens and come down. If your family needs oh that you would rend the heavens and come down. If on behalf of our church and our city you resonate with, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. I want to invite you to to just put out your hands before the Lord in a receptive posture. God, that you would rend the heavens and come down. God, we are a people that that are in desperate need of you. In my life, in our lives, God, we need breakthrough. We need you. God, we're we're willing to remind ourselves of your faithfulness, your goodness, your love, your power, the things that you have done in the past. We are willing to wait, not passively wait, but to wait on the edge of our seat, to wait, to wait with anticipation, to wait with hearts that are hungry and in need, to wait on a good father who who when his children call on him for bread, do not give him a stone to wait. God, many of us in our families need a miracle, need a breakthrough, need things to change. 
we call on you today on behalf of those in our lives that need an encounter with you. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. That in your love and your compassion, and the urgency of your heart, that you would tear open the heavens and come in glory and come in power and come in strength and do what only you can do. God, in our church, We are hungry and thirsty for you. God, we don't want to spin our wheels, expend our energy in fruitless running around trying to create activity. We need a move of your spirit. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. God, our our self-sufficiency and our, our attitudes of judging one another and and criticism and faithlessness. God, we lay those things down because, God, we know that unless you move, we're all just spinning our wheels. So, God, rend the heavens and come down. Pour out your Spirit upon your people in a fresh way. May we remember how you filled us in the past, how you've used us in the past, how we've seen miracles in the past and breakthroughs in the past. And may we wait expectantly because the same God who rent the heavens in the past wants to rend them today. Come pour out your spirit upon us, we pray in Jesus' name. And God, for our city. God, for our city. Thousands of people wandering aimlessly in the dark, tripping over things and not knowing what makes them fall. Thousands of people lost and in desperate need of you. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. God, we would see a move of your spirit upon our city like we've never seen before. We call on the seeds that have been sown in the lives of thousands of people in this city. We call them forth in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Spirit and that, God, you would do what only you can do. We speak life to those seeds in Jesus' name. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down and move in our lives, in our families, in our church, and in our city. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray this because we know you are good. 
We pray this because we know how much you love. God, I pray that you would show us in our own hearts whatever clutter needs to be removed. Enable us, God, by your Spirit to engage with your Word and your presence this year in a way that breathes new life, new hope. May we move forward into this year with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How? Jesus. Lord, we just honor your presence in this space right now. Believe you're speaking to our hearts, calling us. Draw near to you. Pray that those of us online, those of us here in this room, we wouldn't quickly move past this, what we're we're sensing from you right now. We carry it with us into this year. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. What a good God we serve. What a good, good God we serve. Amen. I encourage you, as I have before, and I will say it again, of course, just let these words that have been spoken to us this morning fall on deaf ears or muted hearts. As we, as we leave, let's ponder, let's consider what, what God said to us. Let us act out, we are the call to action, a call to doing of this morning, and so let's be found in honoring what God is saying to us this morning. Be uh, safe as you uh, head out uh, on the roads, be careful driving home, and there is no prayer this evening, uh, and just a reminder of the office.